Now let's look at the causes leading to the occurrence of central retinal vein occlusion. The first one is age. Age is the most important factor which predisposes a person to central retinal vein occlusion. Where commonly it is seen in uh, people above the age of 60 years and our old friends are always there uncontrolled hypertension and uncontrolled diabetes. So CRVO is predominantly a condition seen in older people. However, if you see it in the younger people, you should always elicit a history of taking oral contraceptive pills. So whenever you find CRVO in a young female, that you should attribute it to the consumption of oral contraceptive pills. Okay, now let's see the pathogenesis of CRVO. What happens is that central retinal artery and the vein share a common adventitious sheath that is they are wrapped around suppose this is our central retinal artery and this is our vein so they have a common adventitious sheath which they share. So whenever there is a thickening of the artery due to any reason it compresses the retinal vein within the uh, this adventitious sheath. However, it does not occur throughout the length of uh, the vessels. It occurs where the um, sheath becomes the narrowest that is it close to the lamina cribrosa. The sheath along with the vessels become very com very much compressed anatomically itself. So that area is more predisposed to the occurrence of the central retinal vein occlusion. So this leads to the patient complaining to us of a sudden painless loss of vision. So this is another differential diagnosis. One was retinal detachment and now we have central retinal vein occlusion. It causes sudden painless loss of vision. Kindly remember this, it can be a question. So the patient describes it to us as there is a sudden dimming of lights. So he says, doctor, I was sitting in my room and suddenly the lights got dimmed and I am unable to see anything since then. So that's what he says or he can even say there is a drop in the voltage. That is when he has a partial loss of vision. So these are the two types of complaints the patient can come to us with. Next, on examination, what you are going to find is a very dramatic scene and it is very characteristic of the central retinal vein occlusion and we call this the splashed tomato appearance or the tomato ketchup fundus or famously known as the blood and thunder fundus. What you are seeing here is this one is the typical appearance of central retinal vein occlusion. The entire retina is full of flame shaped hemorrhages. Then, this can be an important question, kindly remember, characteristic of CRVO is the tomato ketchup fundus. Along with that, we can also find soft exudates and you can see from this picture that the veins are quite dilated and tortuous. And then there is some amount of papilledema, that is nothing but our disc edema. So, these are the common features which you are going to find when you examine the Fundus. Let's look at the pathogenesis of CRVO. What happens is when there is an occlusion of the vein, we can all understand that there is a relative level of hypoxia. The oxygen supply is cut off which results in the development of our vascular endothelial growth factor. So whenever there is hypoxia, kindly remember in the entire retina, hypoxia results in the secretion of vascular endothelial growth factors and these are the mischief mongers everywhere and they result in this neovascularization. Now this neovascularization will further lead to a condition called the neovascular glaucoma or the 90 day glaucoma. Some people also refer to it as a 100 day glaucoma. Now why is it called so? Now this entire process to occur it takes about three months that is about roughly 90 days to occur hence they call it the 90 or the 100 day glaucoma. Now what is the reason for that dimming of lights and that sudden painless loss of vision? Obviously it cannot be neovascularization. So the cause of loss of vision in CRVO is macular edema. 
the some amount of edema which you can see from this picture over here there is an elevation of the macula because of this collection of fluid beneath it. So this is the reason for the sudden painless loss of vision in CRVO. Now there can be two types of CRVO. The first one being non-ischemic, it is the most common type and accounts for about 75% of cases of CRVO. And the second one is our ischemic and it is more dangerous compared to the non-ischemic type and it is seen in only about 25% of the cases. See this picture depicts the non-ischemic CRVO whereas the typical our splash tomato is seen in this dangerous subtype of CRVO that is the ischemic CRVO. Now that is about the pathogenesis and types. How will you treat a patient who you have diagnosed is having CRVO? So first you have to control the risk factors. So control the blood pressure and diabetes and then you have to control the intraocular pressure with anti-glaucoma drugs. You will give some anti-glaucoma drugs to reduce the pressure and wait and watch till the hemorrhage absorbs. That is you can wait up to 6 months. With this conservative type of management, you can wait for 6 months and pray for its resolution. Suppose it doesn't occur, then you will have to treat the macular edema with intravitreal anti-VEGF drugs. That is our bevacizumab or bevacizumab or ranimizumab. Okay. So these two drugs you can give as intravitreal anti-VEGFs or you can also give intravitreal triamcinolone or ozodex. Okay. Now suppose unfortunately the patient has landed in neovascular glaucoma. Then again you will treat with these two very same drugs. Those are bevacizumab and ranimizumab. Now that is the story of CRVO. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MediCoab. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.